It's likely that in the next few years, the way we pay our car taxes will change from the current vehicle excise duty per car over to a new system where you pay tax based on how many miles you drive and how clean your car is from an environmental point of view. But what does that actually mean in practice? What problems are there with this system? And are we all going to end up paying shed loads of cash in car tax? How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to yet another video on an interesting topic that faces us as car owners here in the UK. In this video, I explain the proposed changes to vehicle excise duty before giving you what I think this will mean for all of us and my general opinions on it. Let's try to hit a thousand likes in this video, hitting like will let me know that you want to see more content like this in the future, plus it's a free and easy way to help me out. Subscribe as well if you're new here, but without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> So back in 1888, we had our first vehicle tax introduced in Britain, which lasted through to around 1920, when this was changed specifically to be a tax on personal motor vehicles. Originally, the intention of this tax was to build and maintain the roads on which people drove, so all of the money made from that tax was ring-fenced to do exactly that. This lasted all the way through to 1937, where instead of being a ring-fenced fund, the tax went into the main consolidated pot of tax money for the government to use for whatever they need to do. So of course that means some will go on roads but not all of it and where I live probably none of it because it is pothole central. All jokes aside, this tax system has effectively lasted all the way through to today with only a few tweaks based around how environmentally friendly your car is all the way to the point at which today we have some cars that don't pay any vehicle excise duty. And herein lies the crux of the government's problem. By offering tax incentives for people to move to electric cars, they have of course made more people buy electric cars. In fact, EV car sales increased by 76.3% in 2021 and we're already looking at over 1.4 million electric and plug-in hybrid cars on the road in the UK as of April 2022. Now, if we assume that all of those cars would have been petrol or diesel engine cars in the past, there's a clear shortfall for government in terms of how much money it makes per year on vehicle excise duty. But of course, all good things must come to an end, and once they've done their job incentivizing enough people to move to electric cars, and let's not forget the government has plans to end all sales of new petrol and diesel cars come 2030, there's no need for that incentivization to remain, and tax will, as always, return in some some form. So the people that will benefit the most from the tax deductions are those who were the early adopters of electric cars, which I'd say is a bit of a failure from a socio-economic perspective given the additional cost of buying a new EV versus an old banger, but that's probably for another video, and shouldn't come as a surprise that poor people lose out again. Anyway, I've gotten distracted. What the government is suggesting to regain their tax shortfall is a pay by the mile system in future, which includes all cars, but maintains a level of incentivization to own a greener car by reducing the amount paid per mile for more economical vehicles. This isn't some new crazy idea, by the way. It's already in place in many countries around the world, but for the most part, it's limited to heavy goods vehicles, and in New Zealand, it will be put in place for diesel cars too. Oregon even have 5,000 people trialing whether or not it is a better way of handling road tax. It actually has a name, VMT tax or vehicle miles travelled tax, or sometimes referred to as road user charge. Now theoretically it's been suggested that it shouldn't cost road users any more money than they are currently paying, but then if that really is the case, I would immediately ask the question, why bother implementing it? You invest a bunch of time and money putting civil servants in the Department for Transport under a bunch of stress to create a new system that will very likely take years to implement as a result of some politicians themselves saying that the tech isn't really there to make it a success, all to pull in the same money as before except for the addition of cars that previously weren't taxed, like EVs. If that's the case, why not just add EVs into the existing vehicle excise duty at a lower rate than other cars and have done with it? It would save a bunch of time and money and would recoup the cash lost by giving the electric vehicle tax incentives while still giving them lower tax rates. I don't know, but I don't like to stand in the way of change if it can be positive, so how could this all affect us? Well, there could be benefits to some of us car lovers, to be honest, as even though less environmentally friendly cars may have to pay more per mile, if you have a weekend car or a track car that you sometimes drive on the roads, theoretically you could be paying less per year than you are today. Take my MX-5 as an example. Rather than a fixed cost of £295 per year, irrespective of how many miles I do, depending on the pricing model the government goes for, I could pay way less and still 
still use the car as much as I use it today. This is because on average, the number of miles people drive per year in the UK is 7,400. So if we assume that if you drive 7,400 miles per year, you will pay the same rate of tax that you're paying today as indicated by the government, then I would pay 295 pounds per year for doing 7,400 miles, which is basically 4p per mile. Now between 2020 to 2021, I did around 4,000 miles on the MX-5, which assuming it's 4p per mile would be 160 pounds for the year. So I'd save myself 135 pounds immediately. And in that year, I did loads of miles basically for fun on the MX-5. So in the past year, I've actually done way less than 2,000 miles. So I wouldn't be likely to pay any more than like 80 quid for my annual road tax, which is pretty insane for an old 1997 MX-5. Of course, it's completely hypothetical and is entirely based on the fact that we've been told drivers would pay around the same amount they do today. Mathematically, this would work out as the government making the same amount of cash because of course there would be some people that suffer and pay more than they usually do annually because they would be going above the average annual mileage, balancing things out. So if you're someone who puts many miles on their cars, this tax should come as a real negative to you. I would be interested to see if the government proposes this tax with a lower and upper cap. So going by my example, they could say I have to pay a minimum of £50 per year and a maximum of £500 a year. Obviously I've plucked those numbers out of the air though, so please don't take them as gospel. At the moment though, I think the negatives outweigh the positives in terms of making this taxation system a reality, mostly because the technology isn't ready to handle counting every car's mileage consistently across the UK. And though you could use MOT checks to see mileage, you open the opportunity for people to roll back mileage on their cars to pay less tax, and let's not forget how many old and new cars aren't subject to MOTs, so it's not an effective and holistic way of completing the task at hand. You need tech in place to accurately understand exactly how many miles cars are doing through number plate identification, which also opens up an additional incentive for people to clone number plates. So in the end, what do I think? I don't personally think this is time for alarm bells, but then I am someone who doesn't do too many miles, so even though I have a high emissions car, I don't think it would affect me particularly badly. If you are someone who does a ton of annual miles, I can definitely see how this would be annoying, particularly if you drive for business or you literally drive for work. This could eke further into profits in a time where cost of living is at an all-time high. I do, however, think it's interesting that, once again, we have a government that parades itself around as wanting to offer lower tax rates rates, which is creating a taxation system that will, once again, make the government more money through tax. But again, that's probably another non-car related video. But anyway, before I go on a mad political rant, I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this new tax system. Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video either way. Smash the like button if you did and subscribe as well if you haven't already. It's free and you'll get two videos every single week. Massive thanks to the patrons as always for their support and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.